Our guest is an entertainment lawyer. She works with the law firm of Adik Petum Caxton, Martins Adbo, and Shegun, and heads the entertainment law group of the firm. She has, over the years, garnered in-depth experience in providing premium legal advice and representation to individuals and organizations in the entertainment industry in Nigeria, which include film, music, theater, art, television, radio, publishing, and digital media. Aside entertainment law, YMC also has a wide range of experience in intellectual property, immigration, and company secretarial matters in Nigeria. She focuses on the prosecution of trademark, patent copyright, and design on behalf of clients. She manages the immigration status of several expatriates in Nigeria and is involved in general corporate and commercial matters in the firm. She represents some of the major key players in the entertainment industry, such as Latani Bile, DJ Copy, Adekunle Gold, Tokema Kinwa, Funke Akindile, and a host of others. Let us welcome the formidable Yemisi Falaye. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. It's good to Chilling. have you here. I mean, we are very lucky to snatch you on Independence Day. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. very lucky because yeah. yeah. it's supposed to be chilling, but we I know, know. Right? But, but, but speaking of independence, what's your take on Nigeria at 60? Ah, uh, if I feel me, it was very hard on Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, ouch. <laughs> But um, what if a female, I'll call you if a female, if I, a I don't mind, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, what if a female you know, has said on Nigeria is unfortunately the truth. Um, mm -hmm. Nigeria is like um, a, a sick adult and um, all we can wish Nigeria right now is get well we soon. Get well soon. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I think um, to, you know, maybe not so reasonable extent, but I mean, to an extent mm -hmm. we have made progress, you know, mm -hmm. at least in the entertainment industry to a reasonable extent to have made progress. All right, so speaking of the entertainment industry, I like the fact you brought that up. Um, so far, Nigeria 60 now, copyright infringement then was not something a lot of people um, took note of or even mm. cared about a lot back in the days. I'm talking about when um, Afrobeat was evolving in Nigeria. But what are the consequences for copyright infringement now, 60 years down the, down the road? Uh, I mean, like you said, um Copyright infringement wasn't a big deal then, and mm. it wasn't a big deal because people were not even aware mm. that um, they had rights, let alone <laughs> the rights being infringed. Mm. You know, and then um, the little form of copyright infringement that we had then, um, that is very common, is the Alaba, the guys in Alaba <clears throat> that mm. you know didn't allow our mm. artists then reap the fruits of their labor. Mm. But um, thankfully, technology has um, you know has helped us wipe mm. um, Alaba off, if not completely, but to a very, very, large very extent. large extent, you know. But unfortunately, this same technology <laughs> has brought in another Issue. set of um, mm. <laughs> copyright infringers. Those are the ones online, you know. Um, I don't know if I should mention names, but you may, let me not even mention mm -hmm, names to give them, yeah, you know, more, more prominence, relevant. if yeah. you know what I mean, you know. So um, you, you see nowadays that, um, these guys online um, are not allowing artists rip the fruits of their labor again in another form, you know. Um, that is why, you know, this brings me to my next point, which is um, the I mean, copyright bill. Some time ago, I posted that one of, one of um, the honorables in the House of Representatives, you know, at the National Assembly in Abuja should actually do something to mm. ensure that this copyright bill mm. is um, enacted, mm. you know, as soon as possible, because the truth is, a lot of um, creatives, a lot of copyright owners are going to benefit from it. For instance, um, the copyright bill addresses these um, online infringers. Mm. The copyright bill, if passed into law, will allow um, a copyright owner to report an infringing content online. Mm. You know, the ISP can then block access to that infringed content online, you know. And if you're a repeated... Um, infringer the isp has the right to actually pull down your, your domain name mm. you know the ncc can you know buy you from doing stuff online you know so it has the copyright bill has all of these things that will cater for um people in the entertainment industry particularly and then in, in all the people in the um the creatives generally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i am hoping that very soon that um, bill will be passed into But law. based off that bill, would there be a problem with sharing? Because I've always worried about 
the internet being too complicated sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so if you say that somebody else is sharing, let, I mean, for music is a bit different because if you're going to put an illegal site where they can download, it's obviously, you know, illegal in that sense. But let's say, like a skip maker now, he's put a content up and I have a blogging site and I put that person's content on my my own site, mm -hmm. maybe for, maybe to enhance what, we're, what I'm already discussing. You know, think gray areas like that. How would that also be a problem or could that be used as a way for people to also attack that person for sharing or... Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, would this should be the sharing, um, sharing culture with this type of bill that's being passed? So basically, um, I, th I don't think it will affect the sharing culture. I just think it will enhance the regard you have for the owner. So mm. you, you want to use somebody's kit now. It's only courteous, you know, legally and even humanly speaking, yeah. that you seek the person's permission, which right. would might cost you mm. zero, zero, zero pound or zero, zero, zero cover. Right. So, we had, I mean? we so we had a guest yesterday on this table, he's a, he's a skit maker, a content creator, right. mm. and one of the major blogs in Nigeria, Linda Ikeji to be precise, picked up one of his kids, mm. and he said, according to him, he allegedly said, uh, I mean, he alleged that she zoomed in so much that his handle was not even showing. So there's no way to even know who owns the skit. Mm. Mm. So what what are some of the steps that someone like that can take against such a reputable brand who does that to your content? Okay, so um, I'm going to, maybe you should share my contacts with this person. So, yeah. that, <laughs> so that this person can, you know, um, engage me formally so that we can, we'll see what we can do. Mm. But um, one major problem that we have in Nigeria, particularly the entertainment space, is fear. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Americans, for instance, fear nobody. Mm -hmm. If you are a Z-list artist and Beyonce um, samples your music mm -hmm. without your permission, rest assured mm -hmm. that Beyonce is going to get into trouble because mm -hmm. that Z-list artist will not stop until he's all right, mm -hmm. uh, um, catered for, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Right. Yeah. So, but we have this problem in Nigeria. You know, these guys, everyone... Well, apart from me, <laughs> he's scared of the big wigs. You, mm. you, you just even when you were you know, telling me the story, now you said you're a reputable big brand like mm. Linda KG. Mm. Yes, she's reputable. Mm. Yes, she's big. Yes, I love her because she's a personal friend. Mm. But no, she's not above the law. Mm. No, she's not about. She's not allowed to sample without permission. Mm. No, she's not allowed to use content without the owner's permission. Mm. That's right. it. Period. Okay, um, I, I like that you mentioned in your response that you should give that person your contact. Now, I don't, I'm not really sure that there's a lot of entertainers right now, a, even a significant amount of people that have contacts to um, lawyers or people like you that have the service that can protect them, or even aware of, of that. Do you think that an upcoming artist who's not big now has um, um, needs somebody like you? Absolutely. In fact, mm. you need me now. More than yeah. when you have, you, are, you have blown, as we right. say here. Right. You know, I always say to people, once you have discovered your talent, and once you have decided that you want you to commercialize your talent, come look for me first, mm. before you look for anybody else. Then mm. I will help you structure um, your talent in a way where it will be viable, where mm. you can make money, where nobody will cheat you, where you will do things properly. Mm. So once you decide to turn your talent into money, come to me. Looking at you and looking at your list of clientele, one can tell you don't come cheap. So <laughs> how can we help someone like that? We would mm. probably yeah, have just a lot about of money, boring, to, okay, money you know, yeah. to pay. Okay. You know, we can recover it back from damages <laughs> and stuff, well, but what, uh, what's the first step to I mean, I don't come cheap. I, I take that <clears throat> as a compliment and I say thank you. Mm. But... Um, I must always also say that, <coughs> Sorry. Um, bless you, that in my firm, for instance, we do a lot of pro bono, mm. you know, so you can, um, if you don't, we believe in um, growing, we believe in growth, we mm. believe in um, being part of a success story, mm. you know, so um, as much as we look or sound or appear expensive, 
we might not even be as expensive as you think, mm. number one. And then, like I said, we offer pro, pro bono services. So, But I want to ask a little bit about you and even <coughs> what took you to this journey. I mean, it's not very common in Nigeria t to meet lawyers like you. And I used to think that I've met a lot of lawyers. <laughs> so um, did you always know that you were going to do this, even from you know studying and stuff? Or did, this in, did the need for your services kind of pick you, if, if you get what I mean? Both ways, actually. Um, from the get-go, I always knew that, before I studied law, I always knew that I was going to do something in the entertainment space. I wasn't sure what it was, but I always knew I was going to do something in the entertainment space. Um, then um, along the line, a few, I mean, a couple of years ago, it just fell on my laps. I mm -hmm. grabbed it and, you know, I set the ball rolling. All right, so and let's talk about brand protection for entertainers and even content creators because um, even on this table, we've seen several shows called Tea Time. Mm -hmm. But if we go back, we find out that we started before them. Mm -hmm. How can we protect our brand that no one gets to use the brand Tea Time anymore? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your, your brand protection in two, two ways, the business part of it and the legal part of it. Right. I'll start with the legal part because right. if you... If you if you don't protect yourself legally, you can't um, make money, you can't do right. business with um, um, your brand. Now, you said that you started tea, tea Time. The most ideal thing for you to have done is to get a lawyer to protect um, the, the, the name Tea Time as a trademark, mm. the logo Tea Time. I don't know what sort of logo. Yeah, you mm. have the logo Tea Time. Protect it as a trademark. And then the concept of the show, Tea mm. Time, you protect it as well under the copyright um, um, law, you know mm. what I mean? So you just ensure that, you know, you have the legal right. It is not just enough for you to birth an idea. Mm. Most times you need to, you know, go an extra mile to um, um, protect yourself legally. You right. need to consult a lawyer who would assist you to file the trademark um, registration and all of that and copyright um, um, registration and all of that. So that way you can run after anybody, right. anybody who uses tea time without your permission because it belongs to, yeah, yeah, run after them. <laughs> um, I want to ask um, you about working in Nigeria. So we've talked about this a lot, but I feel like even in the spirit of independence, everyone, every industry has to work in this climate, right? right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, even for someone as accomplished as you, there is still space for improvement oh, and growth and absolutely. all of that. What is absolutely. the, what is that one thing you would say working in Nigeria is kind of hindering your your um, performance, if that, if that makes sense. So many things. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. Um, okay, so during this pandemic, you know, I've realized that I, I, the pandemic and working from, from, um, from home, working remotely, has made me um, discover how, I'm trying to, you know, the mildest way, way to put, put it, especially because I'm on TV, it has made me discover how um, far, far behind we still mm. are in terms of um, internet mm. in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Sure. There's, a, there's a particular um, ISP that I used to use before I dumped them. They gave me, th I mean, they gave me a very tough time at the beginning of um, the pandemic. Mm. You know, I called them out a lot of times on, on social media. They reached out to me a couple of times, but nothing. You know, nothing happened. So we need, <clears throat> we need to, we need to, we need to make internet very cheap we need to make mm. internet very uh, uh, accessible, accessible. Mm. we just it just it just has to be there yeah. you know so All that's right. one thing um 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 <laughs> I, I'm not sure I want to talk about <laughs> it. I, I, I'm in a good mood. I don't yeah, want to talk about, yeah. you know, yeah. Nigeria and yeah. things that yeah. are not making but Nigeria I think work. We, what, six is not, it's not so, so old. We yeah. still have a lot of space mm -hmm. to yeah. improve. So, so before we let you go, space. from a legal standpoint, right. what would you say are some of the major wins for the Nigerian entertainment mm. industry? Major wins. The first one, I would say... From a legal say, standpoint. Legal standpoint. Okay, from the first one would be the fact that the people, the people we, we work with are now more aware, mm. right. you know. Um, some people have got into so much trouble that others are now like, I'm, I don't want this. Mm. So they are now more aware. Right. Um, even makes the, the job easier, of course. God bless you, mm. fair female. You know, I don't <laughs> have to. Too. God bless <laughs> you. you too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to lecture, you know, an artist or an actor 
you know, about the, the agreements that I've, you know, drafted for him or her. Mm -hmm. He already knows. And I sent the, the, the artist the agreement. He's asking me questions, mm. you know. For, for example, one of our clients, Zlatan, he signed um, some, some artists um, recently. And um, of course, I prepared the, the record label agreement. Mm -hmm. And I ca he came back asking me precise questions. Nice. He came back correcting typographical errors. Nice. And I was like, oh, wow. So that means, obviously, mm -hmm. he read and assimilated mm. the 15, mm. about 15 page agreement. Wow. Nice. You know what nice. I mean? So, you know, I'm now, we're now working with our aware people and it makes our job easier. We'll work. Mm. Exactly. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> All right, um, finally, um, I, I like the fact that you pointed out Zlatan and now articulate to ease when it comes to this legal yes, thing. You'll yeah. be shocked. So, um, <laughs> I, I would like you to also, you know, do a PR job as well and just tell us what are some of your clients up to that we should be looking forward to before the end of the year? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot, right? Like, you, you never expected it. <laughs> I never expected it. But, but one person I think everyone should look out for is Copy. Mm. Mm. You know, I call her Cruise Master. <laughs> that girl is a Cruise Master, literally. Mm. Copy is a businessman. <laughs> I can't even, I mean, mm. literally, mm. you know, she has a lot of stuff, you know, um, uh, under wrap. You know, she's, she's hard, her. Her doggedness for business, her mm. doggedness for brand um, uh, packaging, as we mm. call it here, is off the hook. Yeah. Wow. So, so we're sleeping should, on her. We're sleeping on you her. You guys, trust me, you're sleeping on All her. All right.